Today on Stylized Station, we're going to take a closer look at Callum's lost temple environment and learn how it was brought to life. Not only that, we're going to learn about sculpting unique stone assets in ZBrush, creating trim sheets, and creating your environment in Unreal Engine. If you want to learn how to master stylized texturing using Substance Painter, feel free to join our latest course, where you'll learn how to create beautiful stylized textures from scratch, including anime and Studio Ghibli style textures. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to consider getting the course. Now let's get into the video. Hi guys, my name is Cal McGrath and I'm here to show you my environment piece I worked on over the past few months. Uh, this was a super fun project for me, it was a really big learning experience and I'm excited to tell you guys a little bit more about how I did it. Uh, first things first, I want to show you guys the concept I based my piece off of. This is uh, a low res image, I couldn't find the original on his art station unfortunately, but I did a concept by Tim Kaminsky. I really liked the layout of this scene and the environment pieces that were in it. I thought it would be doable in the time frame I had and I had a lot of fun figuring out how to make it uh, a little bit more realistic in how I wanted it. First things first, I had to make a block out. Uh, block outs are pretty much essential I think in any piece you're doing from like a gun to an environment to anything really. Uh, level designers a lot of the time will build out just with primitives to show you how levels will flow and then you build off that. Uh, so this is a similar process except you're doing it yourself to just get an idea of the shapes you're going to have in the scene and try and match your reference as well as you can. Um, if you're trying to go for a little bit different you can adjust things but just to a good starting point it's really clean and crisp and it helps a lot in the long run because you know what assets are going to be needed. I didn't do the foliage here because I knew I was going to be doing more of that later and didn't feel it was really necessary. After that I started creating a trim sheet and my door. Uh, since I knew that I was going to be using a trim sheet material for pretty much everything in this scene because I wanted to try out a new method of modeling uh, in which you use kind of trim materials and decals to hide your seams, this was a fun way to f start teaching myself that. Um, I got some critiques which were super helpful and allowed me to figure out the direction I wanted to go. So here were my base decals just showing off, or my base trim sheet just showing off the different areas that had uh, the material put on it. Of course, a lot of this isn't finalized or even close, but I just wanted to see the look of it. From there, I played with the door, adding in glow. These are old images I took from a while ago, so they're really low res. They were just to show an idea of what I was feeling with it. Later on, I started adding in plants and a dirt material just to get an idea of, is this feeling in the realm I want it to? Um, at this point, I was really just making assets and plugging and playing to see what looked and felt right. Uh, as you can see by the door, there's a lot of weird texturing things and that I will fix later when I bring that into uh, into Blender actually to use their weighted normal system, which is super cool and I will show you guys how that works. It allows you to get away with uh, flat poly polygonal meshes while having that nice smooth beveled looking edge without having to bake anything. Uh, here I started adding in some rocks and some foliage and such. Most of this foliage I got originally was from Megascans. I didn't make it originally, I just kind of used what I could find just to get an idea of what I wanted. And then I built all of my foliage assets myself in ZBrush and Substance Designer. But this was my starting point, was just building out just this first set of base shapes just to get an idea of what I was gonna put in here. Then I got a little further ahead. I'm still not really adjusting lighting a lot. I just have a base blocked out lighting to get it similar to the reference. So lighting and contrast is all really wonky at this point, but I'm just trying to continue blocking out my meshes. I started making the fern and the long leaf plants you can see to the right. Uh, of course, they're really low poly right now and I upped the res later on, but it's just to give me a better idea of the direction I'm headed. Also, the moss is all mega scan data right now. Continuing, just some lighting adjustments. 
Then I got here. This was after a little bit. It seems like a big junk jump, but a lot of it's just uh, lighting changes and uh, exposure settings. Uh, at this point, I also started adding in my own foliage uh, and plants. The ground material is still a mega scan material, but everything else in the scene, minus the moss on the stones, is uh, custom made. And then we get here, I start adding in moss of my own, I start adding in my own sand mesh at the ground and some grass material for the under the plants. So I figured if you uh, can blend it well, it'll look nice. Uh, so if you're making a grass material, uh, or if you're using uh, grass in your scene, typically you want glass, grass material to go under it to kind of blend it into the ground. Otherwise, it kind of looks weird if you just have it going into mud. Uh, and that's just because I know in nature you would see that, but it's so layered in nature with grass, it's a lot harder. So to save poly counts, we kind of do that. Or that's what I did. And then I believe this is the final end product. Uh, I pulled back the center grass a lot. My goal was to make it feel like the levels of grass went down from the edges. So you see it starts getting super thin towards the sand as it would naturally, and it builds up in size as you push away from it. So here is my scene so far. This is what I finished with for ArtStation. And I'm going to go in and tell you guys a little bit about certain props I made for this, how I did them. Uh, I'm going to start with the door. Okay, so first things first with the door is I uh, modeled it out quickly in Maya. Uh, just to give me a rough shape. Here I am showing you the ZBrush model because that's what I have currently. I don't have the uh, the base block out I did anymore. But it was pretty similar to the one I did for the Unreal scene. Um, what I did here is I basically just took my base mesh. I dynameshed it. Um, into the pieces that I knew I was going to be modeling from. And then I sculpted those pieces out. Uh, mostly what I used for sculpting was the Trim Smooth Border, which is a tool you can find in your uh, brush settings under, I believe it's Trim. If I go back here. Here, let's just go to brushes. There you go. Yeah, you can find it in the Trim folder. And then another brush I know I used was the uh, Planar brush. Uh, I believe it's the uh, planar rectangle and that gives you some nice sharp rectangular edges you can cut off of so here let me just give you a quick example of how I did that sorry my computer's struggling today it's got a lot of things open in it so just to show you it gives you those nice planar changes and it's just a rectangle but it works really well and then the trim dynamic tool oh if I can grab it is just a similar thing except it's a brush that allows you to not drag out but go in and brush in the details you want i'm just showing you it can change shape with your intensity and if you put an alpha on it sometimes what i would do is just put a rough square alpha on it and that gives you some nice chunky areas you can mess around with and that's kind of pretty much how i did that uh for the the Nordic lettering, what I did was I modeled them out in uh, in Maya and in ZBrush I dynameshed or I uh, booleaned them out to get a nice clean shape. Um, that's the method I used for this. There's definitely other methods you could use, but that was the cleanest and easiest way for me at the time. And then for the cracks, I carved those out myself with dynamesh and sometimes some of these cracks I used a uh, a brush, a crack brush tool, and um, you can find those in stores like the Zebra Central and such like that, and you can use those. And that was basically how I made the door. It was a fun process, pretty quick. Uh, it was just nit, nit, nitty gritty, small stuff. And then I didn't really care too much about this back area because I knew it was going to be glowing, and I didn't really need to sculpt it. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you guys about the trim sheet. Uh, this was another thing that was super important to my project. I probably spent 
a good amount of time on this just because I knew it was going to be a lot of the focal points of the scene. Um, what I did for this here, let me zoom out a little bit. I'm using this because I only have one hand currently. Uh, what I did is I started in Maya to get these shapes. Uh, typically I would do it in ZBrush, but I wanted to try and see if I could get the curving shapes to feel good in Maya. And then I Dynamesh them in ZBrush and started sculpting over them the same way I did the door to get the uh, dimensions I wanted. From there I started adding in the cracks. This I used for the trim sheet for the edges of the columns and pillars. I did this because I needed edge detail to hide the fact that this was a trim sheet uh, where the edge seams would be visible and that's what I used to hide those is these these long strips right here and then you can see, clearly see these are the pillars faces uh, and what I did basically is I took this I put the normal RGB on it from ZBrush baked it out and brought it into Substance Designer to get my material on it. Uh, this was just to get the shapes and then I used the height information from my RGB channel to get the rest of the stuff in Substance Designer and I colored it in Substance Designer as well. Uh, this was pretty fun, it was a new experience. I did take some cracks I really liked that I wanted to use from ZBrush packs. Um, to add to my meshes uh, as decals. So these are all used as decals throughout the scene. Everything here is pretty much a decal. This you can clearly see around the door. And then this is on all the pillars. And that's just the cutouts of the UVs are just based around that. And I'll show that in a second. Okay, so here is the UVs for the pillar. Uh, I'm just showing off one of the older meshes just because it was already set up in the scene. And what you can see is that I basically just took UV shells of each side of the pillar and set it to the exact uh, part of the trim sheet I wanted it. Of course, all of these pillar faces are all going to be on the same, along with these four here down here. Uh, the rest of the pillar is attached to a different material just so that I don't get weird things like what's happening here up top. Of course, I adjusted this later, but you can clearly see that you can see part of the trim sheet up here. But the, in, in Engine, there's a separate material that is blending that away and just having that nice stone glaze. Uh, along with that, we have these. So in the pillar, normally, there are the seams, as you can see here. What I did was I created these nice... Uh, trim decals to go along the edge and basically hide that seam while blending into the pillar. And to get that, I basically created a mask that would blend and blur the edge of this to fade into the pillar. And that was how I set up the pillars for in Engine. For my plants and ferns and grass. What I did was I sculpted them first in ZBrush and then I took them and made a normal map out of it and used that information in Substance Designer to create my albedo, roughness, metallic, and AO channels for my plants. And that is my process basically for uh, creating them from start to finish. Uh, you sculpt them out based off your reference. They don't need to be uh, perfect. I basically sculpted uh, in as much detail as I felt was necessary in each piece. I broke them out because I knew I was going to be making them into separate uh, chunks that I could put together to make the actual fern because otherwise they would be too uh, uniform and I would have issues where if I wanted to put them together to create a larger fern, they wouldn't bend correctly in the geometry. So what I did here was I made that nice sheet out of them so that I could cut it out using alpha cards of the plants as you can see here. Basically I took this and I cut it out with geometry and created my plants using that. Hi guys, I'm going to finish off with just talking about a few things and showing you a little bit of my scene from InEngine just so you guys can get an idea of 
uh, how big it is, how much I put in the scene, and just to realize that there's, it's like set dressing. There's nothing really behind it, but just so you guys can get an idea. Um, if I go in, oh, I'm in locked view. Oops, sorry. So first things first, you'll notice that a lot of these decals are just floating. Uh, at the time, I didn't really know how to address that, and I have come to the point where now I can. Um, I also have that extra wall for some reason, but here is basically my scene just showing it off. A lot of these chains are floating as well. I was just trying to focus on getting that image and seeing if I had the ability to do so. Uh, I also did a couple other camera angles, and this was just to see how things looked in other aspects. Uh, I was told this is a great way to get some better examples of your ref, or sorry, not your reference, but your piece, and just shows it off a little bit more. Um, so just quickly to say is, uh, if you're looking to make your own environment, uh, I recommend starting small. Starting something like a little, little uh, still life is really good. You can get a lot done in just a small little area. This was a bigger test for me because I wanted to try and figure out if I could do a full scene. Uh, as I've already done a couple still lifes before in my free time. So this was just a practice piece and to get a better idea of Unreal. Uh, if you're looking to make your own environment, I recommend just like going with it. Don't be too worried about uh, what aspects you really want to test out. Uh, if you're trying to go for a certain style, try and mimic that style if you can. If you're just trying to figure out how things work, just have fun with it. Um, for me, this was just a test to see where I could put things, what my skill level was at, and what type of style I was looking to push for, and what things I needed to improve on. And uh, I learned a lot just by doing this. Uh, it helps me figure out things I know that I want to continue working on, and things that I need, uh, that I have that are stronger. So uh, it's always fun to finish a piece. Um, don't get dejected if it doesn't come out the way you wanted it. This didn't come out exactly the way I wanted it, but I was very happy with it nonetheless. So just remember, it's always an experience and a learning process. Um, nothing's going to come out exactly how you want, and probably 90% of the time it never will. So just realizing that and knowing that you're doing the best you can and just continue working on what you want to work on and being positive towards is really good. Also, always ask for critiques if you can. If you know people who are willing to critique your work, it's really good helps a lot and it gives you another eye on your work because you've been staring at it for 10 hours straight and don't remember what thing you just looked at and you're slowly melting and it's 2 a.m. That's not from personal experience, but let's not talk about that. Um, <laughs> uh, here is just a little bit closer look at certain aspects of my pieces. Um, you can clearly see that a lot of the meshes are similar for the grass. I pretty much used one mesh or sorry, three meshes for the grass. And then I have flowers just to populate the scene with a little bit more color and pop, pop things. Uh, I'm going to change the door, I think, if I get a chance. And then the chains are just a base metal material I made uh, in Substance Designer in my free time. So yeah, that's pretty much my environment. Uh, if you guys have any questions or want to know a little bit more or want me to go further in depth on video stuff, you can message me. Um, on Instagram or ArtStation. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, I recommend joining any art groups you know of. Uh, Stylization is a really good art group and you can ask a lot of questions and just get a lot of info. So uh, this is all a learning process for everyone. So just have fun with it. And um, I hope my rough breakdown of my piece helps in some way to get to where you guys wanna go. Thank you very much.